Good evening, Internet. Good evening, it is Eric Arnold here on a Tuesday night, May 12th. I think that's right. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Oh, I don't know. It's probably around 8.30 in the evening, I guess. Uh, topic on the agenda tonight is the Los Angeles Dodgers and whether or not we think they're a play or not. Uh, a little, 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 a little apprehensive this evening. Uh, before we get into the Dodgers, um, we're talking about the MLB and are they going to play? Uh, I had a nice discussion today with, uh, my brother, who you may have met from a previous video, um, he actually does read sports news that does not pertain to the Philadelphia Eagles, um, oddly enough. But uh, he had, uh, we discussed the, uh, see, I was of the mindset that there's just too much, you know, in, in, in the era that we're in here, no sports, nobody's stupid enough to have a squabble over money and have a season get scratched because they can't come to an agreement over money. Um, but then, you know, I've been, uh, you know, I guess there's been some things about this whole virus episode that have surprised me. So, you know, my assumption could be wrong. Uh, I, like I said, my default setting was these two sides are going to get together. It's a no brainer. Uh, they're going to come up with something and there is going to be baseball. Now I'm not so sure. Now I'm not so sure. Here's what's going down, apparently. Uh, the owners have made their proposal to the players uh, as to how they want this season to go. Uh, now, uh, 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 let's try to put this into some context here. The owners and the players hate each other. They hate each other. Now, for the player's perspective, I would say there's some good reason to hate the owners. Uh, the owners have pretty much going all the way back, and I mean all the way back, have been nothing but scumbags when it comes to the players. Um, you know, go back into the uh, 100 years from now uh, ago. Uh, the players could have brought black players in, or I should say the owners could have brought black players into the league uh, to improve their chances of winning. Uh, they just didn't want to. They just didn't want to hassle, didn't want to bother with it, so they didn't do it. You know, long past when it was, uh, you know, would have been acceptable even back then. The owners just didn't want to jack with it. Uh, so, you know, there, you know, what's what's more important, winning or, or something else? Well, it wasn't winning. Uh, then, of course, you had the reserve clause. Uh, the uh, players are indentured servants to whatever team that they were assigned to. Uh, and the players had to fight tooth and nail over a 10 year period to get that lifted in the courts. Basically anything the players have gotten from the owners, uh, they've had to fight tooth and nail in the court system to get it. The owners have not given them an inch. Um, and then the owners have just flat out lied to them. You know, when, uh, after the, all the players started beating the owners in court, um, the owner's solution in the 80s was simply not to bid on free agents. They all got together and said, we're just not going to bid on any free agents. <sighs> not bid on any free agents lying the whole time they're doing it. Oh, no, no, we're not colluding. Well, I'm just telling you that, you know, Dave Winfield, Jack Morris, fill in the blank, isn't worth that much. We don't want him. No one wants him. You know, it, it was obvious on the face of it they were colluding. And ultimately, the courts found that they were colluding and were lying about it. So all of this led up to the 94 cancellation where they played half a season and then the owners just decided, we're going to try to get this salary cap. Baseball is the only league that doesn't have a salary cap. Now, is that right? Is that wrong? It is. It just is. And the players like it that way. Um, and the owners have tried numerous times for the salary cap. They tried in 94 and fresh off this collusion debacle where they lied and colluded against the players. Well, they couldn't get the uh, players to agree to it. 
because the players was like, why should I listen to one thing you guys are saying when you've been lying through your teeth to us for the last 10 years? So that all blew up into what happened, uh, what was that now, 25 years ago, where you lost, a, you know, you lost the World Series that year. So there's your background. Players hate owners. Um, owners trying to maximize every last dime. So apparently now they have put a salary cap into this year's proposal. Uh, they call it revenue sharing. It is an essentially a salary cap for this year. The players have vowed on the dead bodies of their past brothers to never ever accept any kind of revenue sharing, AKA a salary cap. And yet here you go, the owners have thrown it in the deal for this year. So what could happen, you know, if the players decide that this is an opening gambit, apparently the, the bargaining agreement runs through 2021. In other words, this year's under contract, next year's under contract, 22, no contract. So, the owners, this could be just simply to them a win-win situation. In other words, we throw out this revenue sharing thing, which was what we want all along. We want a cap on the league, a uh, cap on the spending, like base or uh, like football, like basketball, like hockey. Um, if the players accept it this year, and it'll just be this year, you mind you, just this year. Well, then we have a lot better chance of getting them to accept it going forward. In other words, oh, well, you said you'd never accept it, but then you did. You know, you did. So how hard and fast is your position there that you'll never accept it? Because you did accept it, just saying. Uh, so they, you know, you have that. That's the one side of it. The other side of it is if the players cross their arms and say there is no way we're ever accepting that. Well, the owners could give a shit if they play this year or not. They really could give a shit. I mean, they're not going to make much money this year. Um, if it helps position them to get the salary cap going forward down the road, it would be worth it to them. I think they would see that the players would get blamed this year for not playing. So, uh, yeah, I th it just is, now it just depends on... Are the players going to be willing to accept this revenue sharing thing? And are the owners hard and fast on it? You know, is this a negotiable point? You know, it could just be an opening. You know, the owners definitely want the players to give back some more money. Because this is going to be a revenue short year, no doubt about it. The owners want the players to accept more of the pain. Um, this, you know, could be simply a bargaining tool, in other words. Players go, well, that's a non-starter. We are not going to do that. All right, well, what can you do for us? Because we want something. Well, all right, you take that off the table, and uh, we'll give you back another 5%, 10%. All right, done, deal. You know, it could be something like that. And that would be fine. Then we'd have some baseball. But, you know, I just don't know what the owners are up to. Don't know what they're up to. Don't know if this is the opening uh, salvo in the battle for the future contract if we're going to now open it. Because, you know, this is the perfect time for the owners to do something like this. This is the perfect time. Everybody thinks that we're heading into some really bad economic times going forward. This next decade is going to absolutely suck. Uh, I think everybody thinks that. The owners think that. Um, Roger Goodell just laid off a bunch of people. He seems to think that. So now would be a good time to try to get an agreement going forward that helps you prepare for the bad economic times. So it, it, the owners could be looking at it like this. And if they are, we could all be, you know, I could be wasting my goddamn time telling you about the Los Angeles Dodgers because we might not have any baseball. So all this should be resolved in the next 10 days. We'll find out how married everybody's position these guys are and if they're willing to work out a deal. I still think there's probably more likely than not that there'll be a deal. Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. All right, let's talk Dodgers. The Dodgers. This could be painful for you if you're a Dodgers fan. 
Over the last five years, the Dodgers have been the best team in the major leagues, uh, record-wise. More wins than anybody. You know, just that many more wins than the Houston Astros. Uh, no titles to show for it. They're 0 for 5. Uh, last year, uh, 2019, uh, uh, they had an excellent team. Uh, well over 100 wins. Lost in the division series, a five-game division series, to the ultimate champions, the Nationals. Probably the biggest five-game upset since uh, the Big Red Machine lost in 73 to the you got to believe Mets with Tom Seaver and Tug McGraw, Yogi Berra. So that big upset loss. 2018, uh, they, they made it all the way to the World Series, lost in five games to the Red Sox. 2017 might have been the best team. They had a huge year winning. Now, they, 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 these records encompass the playoffs, too. I, 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 you know, that's six and one half dozen of another. If I wanted to do that, I included that in the record. Why not? Uh, they had a huge year and lost in game seven to the Astros in 2017. Uh, now that we know what we know, they were probably cheated. They were probably the best team that year. Probably should have won the World Series, but were cheated. So, history shows they lost. Perhaps should not have. 2016, lost in the uh, championship series to the Cubs. And then 2015, that was their first start of this big run they had. Um, lost in the division series to the Mets. That was that series, I believe, Don Mattingly lost that series because he benched Chase Utley. Uh, Chase Utley had... Uh, uh, crippled one of the Mets players, and the Mets were outraged, and Utley made them so crazy they would have lost the series themselves had they simply let Chase Utley keep playing. <laughs> but Mattingly was like, oh, I can't play him. I can't play him. It's like, they're, they're so mad. They're, 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 they're going to forget how to play, just focusing on Utley. He's going to make them so crazy. Uh, but, of course, Manley benched Utley and went on to lose the series and ultimately lose his job. So our manager is Dave Roberts. Uh, what do we think of Dave Roberts? Um, I think Dave Roberts is actually a good manager. I'm checking, checking my notes here on Dave Roberts. Yeah. Yeah, computer's on battery and it goes to sleep too damn fast. i got to change the settings. Um... Yeah, we got him as a, basically a break-even manager. So he's slightly better. I think we, he's about even. So he's better than the major league average. Remember, your return on investment, uh, what would be 50-50, um, which means you're losing when you factor in the VIG, is about 1.9% return on investment minus 1.9% return on investment. Uh, he's back up around... The, uh, a break even. The Dodgers, now this is interesting, as I, I wanted to say, you know, it doesn't help you to know who the best team is. You've got to try to figure out where there's value. Everyone knows this Dodgers team is great. So over the last five years, best team in the league, if you bet on them every game, you would have lost 1%. You know, that, that, that's a little better than average, but you're still losing. This is not a team that you could just throw the money on the team and expect to win money because everybody knows they're good. You're paying a fortune to bet this team every game. Uh, look at what they were last year. First in the league in runs. First in the league in runs against. Third in the league in fielding. My own little metric. So, you know, this is the best of the best. Uh, so what are we expecting them to do this year? As you can see, Vegas likes these guys 101 wins and a half. I don't know I've ever seen a number like that. Even with the Yankees. That's just, I mean, it's, it's hard to win 100 games. There have been a lot of great teams in Major League history that don't win 100 games. It's a long season. 
injuries, um, maybe no one's chasing you. In other words, I, I'm playing well, but the, uh, the nearest competitor is 20 games back, so what do we care if we win? You know, we're just kind of coasting. Uh, so that is a huge number. Now, if you go up and down the lineup with these guys, it's still stacked. I mean, I, I can't find a whole lot of holes or things to complain about. Um, they made that trade with Boston. Now they have Mookie Betts. I mean, your outfield is what? Mookie Betts, Cody Bellinger. You have an MVP, a former MVP. I think Bellinger was the MVP. I'm not 100% on that now. Um, I know Betts was a former MVP. Uh, it, 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 Max Muncy, it, 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 the Dodgers just seem to be able to find guys like Justin Turner, Max Muncy, guys that were just guys somewhere else and turn these guys into stars. Uh, I don't know how they do it, uh, but they're doing it. They've been doing it. Uh, now you've got this guy Bueller, uh, uh, couple him with Kershaw at the top of their rotation. Probably if I was going to try to pick a deficiency in these guys would be their pitching. Uh, their pitching just looks so to me. You know, Clayton Kershaw is just not what he used to be. He's, he's, he's good. He's good. He's not spectacular like he used to be. He used to be unhittable. Uh, now he's just kind of so. Uh, Bueller, you know, do it over the long term. Let's see how you do it. David Price is just so. Uh, and then you got, you know, your fourth and fifth guys. They have depth, though. They always have depth. So, you know, one guy stumbles, they'll plug in somebody else, and he'll probably perform better than you expect him to. But they have young players, too. I mean, uh, the, uh, they're plugging in a number one pick at catcher, uh, Will Smith. Uh, they're plugging in a number one pick at second base, this uh, Gavin Lux. Uh, so, it's it's... It's a team that has a good mix of veterans and, and young players. Uh, it's a deep team. I, you know, you want to say fade this team because they're so well known. They're going to be so expensive uh, that you will try to find spots to beat these guys. And, and undoubtedly, we're going to, you know, attempt that in some places. But I'll be careful. Just blindly playing against these guys. Uh, uh, these are guys that generally hold their value. I think what we're going to do here is just say nothing. You know, I don't think there's a lot of value here. Uh, but I don't. It wouldn't surprise me if these guys won 100 games. I mean, they're, they're so stacked. And then of course they just say, "Oh, they're going to." Euphemistically win 100 games, because obviously we're not going to play a 100-game schedule. Uh, but yeah, this is, a, this is an excellent team. An excellent team. They're going to be in the playoffs in some fashion. Uh, they're going to probably be the shortest price on the board all year long in the National League, I would think. Um, so we'll see. Uh, but that's what we think of the Dodgers. They're expensive, but they're worth it. If that makes sense. Uh, so, what's next? Uh, well, I guess the Padres. I guess the Padres. Yeah, well, uh, that'll be helpful for me because I don't know the first damn thing about the San Diego Padres. So, I'll be a learning experience for me. Um, very good. That's what we have. It's Tuesday. Looking forward to Wednesday, I guess, because it comes after Tuesday. Very good. Um, like button. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, either or. Don't hit the dislike button, that, that, that doesn't help me at all. Uh, so, um, appreciate you coming. Thanks for being here. We'll see you again.